Okay, so um, people can continue to get on as we get started. Um, so I'll just go ahead and kick things off. But my name is Caroline Stivers, an operations manager of Kentucky Commercialization Ventures, and will be hosting us today. Uh, the Kentucky Intellectual Property Alliance, or KIPA, is a program of the Kentucky Commercialization Ventures Initiative and KSTC. The mission of KIPA is to foster an effective ecosystem and marketplace to facilitate the creation, protection, and advancement of intellectual property in Kentucky by serving as a connecting organization for statewide companies, organizations, and innovators. If you're interested in learning more, you can find more information along with the form to join as a member for free on kyipa.org. Also want to give thanks to all of our executive advisory committee for the support they provide and all the incredible guidance they've provided since KIPA's formation. Uh, so big thank you to them. I'm going to get us started today with just a few housekeeping things. Um, first, the webinar is being recorded. I'll email a link out to our attendees and um, all of our membership. Um, and then with that, um, Accessibility is very important to us, so we do have captions available for the webinar. Those can be turned on or off at the bottom of your Zoom window. We will also have the transcription of the webinar available after wrap up if it's needed. Just please send me an email at cstivers at kstc.com if you'd like a copy of that, and I'll put that in the chat in just a minute. And then lastly, as we are hosting in the webinar format, participants are all muted. So please place any questions or comments you have in the Q&A or the chat area. And if they've not been addressed by the end of the presentation, we'll make sure to answer them before we end the call today, or we'll connect with you afterwards. And now I have the pleasure of welcoming Holly Fechner. Um, Holly is the Executive Director of Invent Together, an alliance supported by organizations, universities, companies, and other stakeholders dedicated to understanding the gender, race, and other diversity gaps in invention and patenting and supporting public policy and private initiatives close to them. Holly is also a partner at the law firm firm Covington and Burlington LLP. She is co-chair of the firm's technology industry group, and she previously served as policy, policy director to Senator Edward Kennedy. Today, Holly's going to tell us more about Invent Together, their mission, and what you can do to help close patent gaps for women, people of color, and all underrepresented groups. So Holly, thank you so much for joining us today, and I'll hand it over to you now. Well, thank you so much, Caroline. And it's such a pleasure to be here with this group uh, from Kentucky. I'm excited about your mission to um, very important to bring together the community that you're bringing together to talk about the importance of intellectual property um, for both our country and for uh, individuals. So um, appreciate that introduction. Um, Invent Together is an alliance, and we are very proud of all of our partners. Um, we've got nonprofits and companies, universities, technology transfer offices who have all come together to create a community to prioritize um, ensuring that we uh, make the uh, invention ecosystem as diverse as possible. Um, in so many ways. I expect that this group doesn't need to be convinced of the benefits of doing that. Uh, we are all stronger, I think, if we encourage as many people as possible um, to invent and patent because we know the incredible benefits that uh, that brings both for the individuals themselves, um, the institutions they're connected to, uh, but also for the, the greater economy. Uh, so we began working on this about six years ago, and uh, it was an informal effort, but last uh, September, we decided to formalize our alliance and stand up uh, this group, uh, Invent Together. I would very much encourage people to take a look at our website, um, inventtogether.org, and also uh, follow us on Twitter at Invent Together. But let me give some sense of what we are focused on uh, because we are trying to 
um, work in a number of different areas and try to take a holistic view of how to make progress uh, in this area. So um, first of all, we feel that research is fundamental. Um, and this is an area that has been lacking um, in terms of understanding more specifics about who, particip who participates in the innovation ecosystem um, and who does not have uh, the full opportunity to do so. So Invent Together has commissioned uh, four separate reports from a think tank, the Institute for Women's Policy Research. You'll find um, those uh, reports on our website. Uh, some are quantitative and some are qualitative. We both wanted to understand um, the basics uh, in terms of the data, but it was also incredibly important to us to have uh, qualitative research where we really spoke with uh, inventors uh, and people who wanted to become inventors to understand more specifically the kinds of challenges that they face and the opportunities they had and what really made the difference for them. So would love um, for you to, to take a look uh, if you're interested in um, in depth, the, the various different um, studies that we've commissioned. But we've also reached out and worked with some of the uh, top researchers in the field. I'm thinking of people like Dr. Lisa Cook, um, who is the nation's foremost researcher on invention, patenting, and race. Um, she actually was just confirmed by the Senate to uh, serve on the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. So I think that's an exciting development for anybody who cares about this issue to have somebody um, serve at the Fed who uh, is such an expert and so knowledgeable about this topic. Um, we've also worked closely with Dr. Alex Bell who did uh, some of his initial research on this subject at Harvard um, and now works at UCLA. Um, but he has been focused particularly um, on um, what uh, encourages children to become inventors later in life. Um, some fascinating uh, research that I think helps us think about some of the ways that we can uh, change our education system, um, our mentoring programs, and really reach kids um, as they're developing and thinking um, about having an invention education, invention uh, mindset. So uh, certainly research is part of it. Um, we also work uh, in public policy. And this is uh, a place that I think we have really contributed to the national dialogue on these issues. So uh, we be began by encouraging the relevant committees in Congress to hold hearings on this subject uh, as really as a first step to make sure that members of Congress and the public were hearing from people who are knowledgeable about this area. So uh, the House Judiciary Committee and the Senate Judiciary Committee, which both have a uh, jurisdiction for intellectual property issues held um, powerful hearings, uh, hearing from inventors, um, uh, people uh, at corporations, uh, university representatives, um, as well as our academic experts about the, the challenges and opportunities in making progress to diversify who invents and patents. And as a result of those hearings, uh, we worked with members of Congress to introduce legislation. So our first bill is called the Success Act, and it did uh, pass in 2018, and it directed the USPTO to do a comprehensive literature review of the subject um, and to make recommendations about next steps. 
Um, the USPTO has been a tremendous partner in this effort. They did a fantastic report and then they've done a number of additional reports. And I'll just mention again that we've uh, made sure to provide links to all these reports on our website, uh, inventtogether.org. And uh, the, they also, um, as part of the report that they put out, made it clear that there wasn't enough uh, data available on the subject. We certainly have enough data to know that we have a lot of progress to make. Um, for example, the fact uh, that they found that of US inventors, only 13% uh, are women um, and that uh, African-American patent in the United States uh, peaked in 1899 and hasn't recovered since. Um, so I think these are the kinds of statistics that make it clear to anybody that cares about both the future of our country, but also equal opportunity for all people that we've got um, significant work to do in this area. So uh, the USPTO uh, 6X Act report did say that uh, more data needed to be collected. So we followed up that legislation with new legislation that the Congress is co considering now called the IDEA Act. And that bill would um, ask the USPTO to collect demographic data on patent applicants on a voluntary uh, basis um, and make it available in the aggregate um, for a deeper understanding of this issue and uh, for everybody, both the public, researchers, and the government to determine how to make uh, additional progress in this area. So uh, in addition to those bills, well, and let me just say that the IDEA Act is now a part of a bill that has passed the Senate and another bill that passed the House. Um, and those two bills are being conferenced. So uh, we do hope that uh, a final bill gets to the president, which does uh, include the IDEA Act this year. And I'm happy to talk more about that particular process and the, the other bills that, that, uh, that IDEA Act is a part of, because I think they would also be of interest to, uh, to this community. But um, in addition to those bills, there are a number of other ways that I think the, the Congress is looking at these issues. Um, for example, the Small Business Administration runs some programs that are very important to entrepreneurs and people who have intellectual property or who have ideas that need to be uh, protected by patents. Um, and that legislation, the Small Business Reauthorization, um, should, uh, is, is going to be expiring um, in September and needs to be passed by the Congress. So we have been weighing in with the relevant committees, the two small business committees in the House and Senate to try to improve um, those programs. Um, we are also working closely with Senator Leahy and Tillis on a bill they have called uh, Unleashing American Innovators. And the purpose of that bill um, is multifold, but I think two of the major parts are to uh, encourage uh, pro bono assistance uh, for inventors, because we all, I think, appreciate that uh, applying for and sustaining a patent is quite an expensive endeavor. And we have found um, through the research, and I'm sure this is uh, common sense to people, that the uh, expensive cost is certainly a barrier to diverse inventors. So uh, we're excited that there are many different ways that the Congress is thinking about uh, making progress in this area. 
But of course, a lot of things can be done in public policy without passing additional legislation. So we are working with the administration to try to ensure that they take as many steps as possible. Uh, we uh, have been part of a process that the USPTO started a couple of years ago called the Council for Inclusive Innovation. This is a body made up of representatives from industry, nonprofits, universities, uh, various different parts of the, the government um, and individual uh, inventors. And the goal of the council was to look at these uh, issues related to equity, inclusiveness, and diversity in the invention ecosystem and to develop a national strategy uh, to make progress. It, it's been a really heartening experience to participate in that effort. So many wonderful ideas. Um, and the USPTO staff has drafted up um, a version of the national strategy. Um, and uh, I think as people know, um, the Senate just very recently confirmed a new head of the USPTO, uh, Director Kathy Vidal, um, and she comes to her position with a long history in uh, these issues. Uh, she's been very committed to equity, inclusiveness, and diversity as part of her work uh, in the private practice. Um, our Invent Together group just had an opportunity to meet with her last week to talk about these issues and to talk about the national strategy. And we were very excited to hear how incredibly committed she is to making uh, progress in this area. So we do expect um, in the not too distant future that the USPTO along with the Department of Commerce and the Small Business Administration will move ahead with this uh, report from the Council for Inclusive Innovation um, and uh, the national strategy. And I do just wanna say that there will be so many opportunities for people who want to be part of this effort. Um, the director very much wants to have um, events around the country and partner with people um, and I'm sure she would love to uh, think about how she could partner with you all in Kentucky to uh, raise awareness of the national strategy. Um, and she's also looking for uh, groups and companies and universities to make particular commitments about how they're, what kinds of things they're gonna take on in their own um, work settings or communities to further this um, broader effort. Um, so um, I do think that in addition to working with Congress, that there are many things that the administration can do on its own. I also did wanna mention that Invent Together has um, a fabulous partnership uh, with the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO. Um, we have partnered together um, to uh, hire a researcher. Um, WIPO did a terrific 2016 global study um, on the state of uh, women inventors and patent holders around the world. And as part of this new effort with WIPO, we're going to be updating that study with current uh, data, but also looking uh, much more broadly to try to look at this issue in a global context. We're holding a series of regional uh, meetings with people from uh, different parts of the world. We first started with the Americas, so North and South America. And then in a couple of weeks, we're gonna be having uh, 
another uh, three-day series of meetings uh, focused on Europe. And then after that, we're going to have another regional meeting with Asia and then another one with Africa. So uh, I will certainly uh, share the invitation if people are interested in uh, tuning in uh, to this event. Uh, and we're also looking for um, companies that uh, uh, have um, active uh, patenting and uh, offices in Europe who might want to participate in an off the record uh, discussion because uh, another component about the work at Invent Together is that we're very focused on uh, best practices. When you think about who's really inventing and patenting and how we can make a difference to um, diversify um, who invents and patents, we've got to focus on companies and universities, given that so much of the activity is happening. Um, and so uh, best practices um, and sharing information um, among uh, people at companies and at universities who are committed to making a difference, we are finding um, is a, an important strategy to this larger effort. And companies and universities are at all different stages of taking on this challenge. And we find that if they have a safe space to discuss both their um, progress and also the challenges that they face with other uh, people who are going through the same process that it really can help drive the, the greater efforts forward. So uh, making sure that uh, companies have a community of people that they can talk to. Um, we see um, the toolkit that IPO has put out playing an important role. Um, Autumn has a toolkit for universities. And, and of course, we're finding that, that that's very important um, for that community um, as well. But uh, let, let me stop there because I would love to uh, hear from the group about any thoughts and questions um, that we have. And of course, we are always looking for more partners to join our alliance. Um, you, if you go to our website, you'll see all the various different people that um, have partnered with Invent Together. And it's a really uh, terrific community um, because we know that, that this is not a, a simple issue. And I think the national strategy that the um, Council for Inclusive Innovation developed really recognized that that there are so many different stages in the life of a potential inventor, an inventor, um, an entrepreneur, somebody who commercializes their invention. And there's so many different um, communities that play a role in that. Certainly education does, um, both at the, the younger ages, um, but also university, graduate school, on the job training, um, the way that companies set up their internal functions to identify um, what is an idea that is appropriate to be patented. Um, one of the key findings that I think all the studies that look at this issue um, conclude that uh, mentoring programs are, are critical People have to see other people um, who look like them doing this, and they need that specific support um, to uh, make sense of this quite complicated area. Um, we have another study that um, identified the very important role that what we call um, gatekeepers play. So the attorneys that uh, represent inventors in filing for their patents, um, 
the uh, patent examiners at the patent office, um, all of the various different people that participate and could make an important difference um, in terms of the, the overall objective that I, that I think we share. Um, so I do, again, want to thank you very much for uh, having me today and would love to, to hear any questions from people. Yeah, and th thank you so much, Holly, for that overview of all the amazing work you all are doing. Um, so we do have a couple of questions. Um, so back to kind of the getting involved that you were mentioning, what are some examples of commitments made by Invent Together partner organizations? Ah, that's that's a great question. Um, so let me take a few examples. So Anita B uh, is a nonprofit that represents uh, women technologists. So they have uh, they are an enormous organization and have tens of thousands of members. There's not not that many people, you know uh, organizations in this space that are so large. Uh, they have made a significant commitment to public education, to ensuring that these issues um, are raised at um, to their very large audience. Um, and then let's take Autumn. Um, it's hard for me to even catalog all the things that, that Autumn has done. And I know Megan is with us today and she can add a lot um, to that discussion. Um, but one of the things they've done is to create this um, toolkit for people at universities to uh, use to do an assessment. The toolkits, the point of the assessments is to do, uh, the toolkits is to do an assessment of your own organization, whether it's a company or it's a university, to uh, try to see where you're what you're doing right and what you might uh, be able to uh, improve. Um, we've got a number of companies that have made uh, significant commitments. Uh, for example, um, Qualcomm has been developing a new online educational tool for diverse inventors and um, invent together is planning on releasing that tool uh, in June. So very excited um, for people to see that. They have background in this area because they have developed similar tools for um, inventors in India, for example. You know, so they came to this um, issue with experience from before but they needed to uh, revamp it for a U.S. audience. And um, we worked with them to bring in um, expertise on equity um, and diversity. Um, another example is 3M. They have um, uh, let uh, one of their key patent attorneys devote a significant amount of time to developing the toolkit that, uh, that IPO has. And I know they just did an update uh, of that toolkit. Um, so, you know, as you can see, um, there's lots of ways that, that people contribute. We've got a number of attorneys that devote their pro bono time um, to the various different programs around the country to provide representation uh, for people who want to patent. So lots of, lots of great activity from the, from the partnerships. It really does take, take uh, a big uh, uh, team pitching in. Yeah, so much, so much great work going on. Okay. Um, so Monique has also asked, what's been the role of the USPTO in achieving more diversity in IP? What are their other opportunities for growth? Um, just for some context, they've been a great partner to KIPA. Um, so we're kind of seeking suggestions on uh, things things we can suggest to them for any opportunities to be made. That's great. Yeah, no, I 
through both um, Republican and Democratic administrations, the USPTO has been a great partner on these issues. Um, I really want to call out the tremendous work of a few people. Um, Valencia Martin Wallace has been running the Council for Inclusive Innovation. Um, she's got some fantastic people on her team, like Janine uh, Giana, um, and the chief economist at USPTO, um, Andy Toole, has done fantastic work. And you'll see the, the reports that have come out of the USPTO um, have been led uh, by Andy. And as I was mentioning before, our new director, Kathy Vidal, I think is deeply committed. Um, at the meeting that we had with her last week, she made it clear that she wanted to hear from people. So I'm sure she would appreciate um, outreach uh, from you uh, about specifically what you would like to do in Kentucky. And I would um, arrange an opportunity for her to visit and, um, and speak um, to uh, people there. Um, so I, you know, I, look, there's a lot more to be done. I think the USPTO does a terrific job with their public education programming. Um, we do think their pro bono program needs to be improved. Um, it, it is underfunded, which you know maybe is more more uh, on the um, the plate of Congress than it is the USPTO. But it doesn't nearly provide, I think, the the full support that we need. So that is an area that I think the, the USPGO could make additional progress. Okay, um, and then it's kind of a follow on more, still getting involved as, as everyone is interested in. Uh, what are some ways that just individuals within our, our membership could get involved in supporting diverse inventorship? Well, I would say um, sign up for our email list. Um, you can go to our website and sign up to receive information because then you'll be in the loop about all the developments uh, in this field. Um, and then uh, think about if there are organizations that you're uh, a part of that would be good partners for Invent Together. And then also think about uh, where you work and what kind of steps um, could you take if you're um, at an institution, uh, raise the subject and uh, form an internal team, um, take advantage of the resources that are available for best practices. How can your institution um, take steps to make a difference um, if you're uh, an IP attorney? Um, how can you provide pro bono assistance or give um, workshops to people? Um, I, you know, once the national strategy comes out, I think that's going to lay out a lot of particular opportunities for people um, as well. But, but I hope some of the ideas that I've shared uh, give people a sense of, of ways that they contribute. I, you know, I always find that the best way to contribute is to get connected to a broader community and then do do your work where you are where where you know you know the situation the best and you can really make a difference yeah i love that my my grandma always said find your little piece of the world and make it make it better um that you're familiar with um so kind of a follow on to that also great great questions all leading into to others um so ian says thanks for being here we appreciate it um we want to we want kentucky to be known as a leader in inclusive innovation so one to set an example for equity and inclusion in innovation and two to help optimize our capacity to innovate by ensuring diversity of ideas and diversity of perspectives do you have any good data or know of any studies that help convey messaging around the latter? The and the latter being um, 
to help optimize capacity to innovate by ensuring diversity of ideas and diversity yeah. of perspectives. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it really is exciting um, because the, uh, the data that we have from economists really would convince, I think, anybody who's uh, being open-minded about this issue that it is an imperative that the United States take full advantage of all of our talents. I mean, one way to think about it is to think about um, the, the WIPO study from 2016 and the results that showed that, for example, China and Korea do have um, about half of their women participating in invention and patenting. You know, and if you compare that to our 13%, it just shows you that we're competing at not our full capacity. Um, and it's very clear both with um, gender and race. And uh, the data also suggests that children who come from lower income families also do not have the full opportunity to uh, invent and patent. Um, and for example, example, Dr. Alex Bell uh, finds that if we did um, take full advantage of the, uh, the population in the United States and ensured that uh, we diversified who invents and patents, that we would have four times as many inventors. What's not to like about four times as many inventors? Um, and Dr. Lisa Cook has done the research to show the tremendous um, GDP growth that we could have if we did take full advantage of all of the talent um, that we have in this country. So um, if, if people, um, I think this is one of the ways that we can reach people about how important this issue is. So of course it's, it's important from a moral perspective and sort of the foundational values of the United States of uh, fair and equal opportunity, but it really is an economic imperative now when we see ourselves um, in uh, a vigorous uh, global competition. And I think, you know, these last couple of years of the pandemic has shown us that we need to make sure that we are taking full advantage of our ability to both invent and make uh, many things in the United States. The, the other um, piece that um, I think is so important to this is that we, the research finds that when uh, different people have the opportunity to invent, they come up with different inventions because people come up with the ideas that they come up with based on their lived experience. And if we have more people with broader experience, broader lived experience, thinking about inventing and patenting, then we're gonna have uh, different inventions, which it could only be to the good. So I really do think the, the economic data supports um, the importance of this work for uh, states and for the country as a whole. Okay, so then we have a question from Kayla. Um, what is your pitch to people who have never thought about IP or sincerely do not understand the value? So how do you get people outside of tech transfer professionals and lawyers to care about IP? That's a great question because, uh, and I find this with my work with uh, members of Congress, sometimes they can be very scared even uh, talking about these issues because it feels so technical and they don't feel like they're, they're up to the task. Um, and I think the best way to go about it is to really talk um, in stories about inventors and their inventions because that's something that everybody can understand. 
Um, and when you start there, then I think you can convince people that this is a subject that they should care about. Um, so telling stories, I think, is is an important way to reach people who are not already part of the, the IP ecosystem. Yeah, that's great, great advice. And hopefully, I think something we'll be able to, to implement too uh, as we as we kind of grow, grow things more here in Kentucky too. Um, when, let me just say one of the reports that um, we worked with the Institute for Women's Policy Research on was um, uh, interviewing, I think it was about a dozen different inventors. And like, for example, that's just a great source of stories. Um, and you could, you know, you can see just the amazing uh, things that they've done, but also the challenges that they face. And I would encourage people to think about what stories would resonate in their own community. You know, coming up with a story bank of Kentucky inventors would be really awesome. You know, and in terms of the economic research, one thing that, that hasn't been done that I would really like to see done um, is more work on um, the geographical dispersion of invention and patenting. Um, Andy Toole, the chief economist at the USPTO, has let us know that he's coming out with a study soon that is going to cover this. So I think that's going to be fascinating um, to, to see and hopefully will just give us more information to, to take advantage of. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be great to see. Um, so we have another question from Ian. He says, has Invent Together looked at PTIE and its ability to help make academic research and innovation more inclusive? I'm sorry, what, what was the acronym? PTIE. And that's not one I'm familiar with. So Ian, if you, oh, promotion, tenure, uh, innovation, and entrepreneurship. <laughs> Sorry, not to see it. <laughs> good point, good point. Um, absolutely. I mean, I feel like um, the, maybe some of the um, most deep thinking about that issue has come from the, the autumn community. But there is no doubt about it that one of the barriers that um, Invent Together has found as part of the research in speaking with, um, with the inventors is that it is not, um, inventing and patenting is not as um, valued um, in the promotion and tenure process um, as uh, publications. And, you know, different schools do it differently. And... Um, I think that it is an area that probably needs a closer look. And again, I think that would be a terrific area for um, best practices. So, um, you know, what is the range of what different universities do in terms of valuing um, patenting? And then um, what uh, are some best practices that certain universities have, and then most importantly, if possible, to show results from that. Like, what has that meant for the university that they have um, brought that consideration into their promotion and tenure system? If anybody has any further um, information about this area, that we would really be interested in and welcome that. It's, it's a, I think it's a terrific area to, to spend more time on. Yeah, and I know there's a lot of work going on with that in the universities and things around here too. Um, so let's see, looking at questions. Sorry, we had a bunch of chats come in. I think I see two. Terry had one that I think may have been related to your earlier um, mention of Asia doing some work um, about the genders um, and patenting there. Um, he says, are there any countries that we can learn from in fully engaging our whole population? That is definitely one of the things that we're trying to learn from our work with WIPO. 
um, we will be doing some best practices work to look more closely at different uh, countries. And it's so interesting because if, if you look at the, at the uh, top uh, countries in terms of where women patent, I mean, there are some surprises. And I think with the countries like China and Korea, I think it is built into their education system um, in a certain way that it isn't in the United States. Um, for example, in Korea, as part of the standard curriculum, um, and I'm trying to remember if this is at the elementary school or the middle school level, they do have invention education. Um, but I think it's also a uh, sense, you know, from a US perspective, we are all about choice and having students choose what area they're interested in. We know, of course, though, that choice is constrained. Get out, you're, you're interested because you see other people like you going into a certain area. Um, I do think um, that, that maybe um, it, certainly um, in China, for example, um, people are filtered into certain areas and maybe that sense of choice is, is not as robust as it is in the United States. So it's not as if we can just import what other countries um, are doing. But then um, I think, well, I think um, uh, Spain, for example, and uh, uh, Italy um, rank higher than one would think. And I think that has to do with some of the strength of their industry um, in fashion and design and then what that means in terms of women's participation. Another very significant challenge that we're discussing with our work with WIPO is how to deal with issues related to race and ethnicity in a global context. Um, certainly in the United States, we know how to um, study these issues and discuss these issues, um, but for example, the first WIPO study really was just on gender and did not encompass uh, race and ethnicity and indigenous populations. So that is something that we are, are trying to address going forward. So we have a more complete sense uh, globally of, um, of, of how the different countries uh, rank and strengths and weaknesses. So I do, I do expect that we will learn more um, as that work continues. Oh, and this is good. I, so I see there's a whole conference coming up on the, the promotion and tenure issue. And I would love to, to hear from folks after that about um, progress in this area and best practices and all. So um, please do keep us updated. Yeah. Yeah, I think coming up in June, is that what somebody said? Sorry, yeah, this, or this summer, this summer um, from PTIE. Um, so I think this next one, you kind of started to touch on a little bit, but Stephen typed in the Q&A, to take full advantage of the talent in our country, country, it's important to consider that people have different ways and styles of learning and communicating information their right brain styles and left brain styles or visual, auditory and tactile styles of learning. Has Invent Together looked into the variety that exists here or from a big picture perspective, do you know any stories that shed light on how all these styles of thinking and communica communicating bring positives to innovation? That's a great question. And the way that we have learned more about this issue, um, is in two ways. One was through our research on talking to inventors and doing qualitative uh, interviews about their challenges. And the other way is through the best practices work that some companies have done internally. Because one of the things that you learn when you talk to inventors is exactly this, that some people uh, that the, the systems that companies or universities have set up to work with inventors 
to try to turn their ideas um, into um, uh, to patent to be protected by patents. Um, it's sort of like a one size fits all. This, this is how we work with people. And what's really clear is that the, the way it's set up doesn't work for all inventors. And so um, I think a number of companies I am aware of are in the process of changing their internal a way of doing business to try to capture um, ideas that, that could be patented. And this is a really, has to be a thoughtful process. And you've got to have buy-in from leadership um, to, to do this kind of thing. So I, I see, as I was saying before, I see different companies and universities at very different stages about how they're, um, once they've looked closely at the, the challenges that they face and have done this self-assessment, they're then in a, um, they then have the ability to make the kinds of changes and change their internal processes. So it's exciting because um, it, it is got to be done this way at many different places, right? I mean, you know, we can have the, the USPTO put out a national strategy, we can have Congress pass laws and all these things are helpful. But I really do think the, the most change is gonna be made by people at particular institutions who take on the challenge and the hard work of looking very closely at how they can make progress. And that's some really great insight and a challenge challenge for everyone on here today <laughs> to start looking at those things a little, little closer. Um, and then we have one last question that I'm seeing for now from Monique. Uh, who's doing remarkably well when it comes to increasing diversity in IP in your opinion? And so where are the bright spots in our nation that we can glean from? Ooh, this is a challenge for me to um, address because so many people want to keep this information um, very close. You know, what one thing we do see is we see that certain companies in industries that um, are more uh, either open or committed to diversity generally have made more progress. So I think this is where it, it comes in that the leadership of whatever the institution is needs to have a broader commitment to these issues. Um, and then you can make some of the changes that you need to make. Um, and so it is, you know, it, it, I don't think we're at a point where we really um, can, can share names. Like one thing we see, for example, though, that um, the companies um, in the um, biopharma industry, just because of the history of more women getting PhDs in that area, they definitely have a bigger pipeline to draw from. Of course, even if you have the pipeline, we see lots of drop off. Uh, later on, because the you know workplaces are not necessarily set up for diverse populations, uh, the, the the way that we sort of capture ideas and turn them into patents is that not set up for diverse populations. Um, so you know we we know that at all the different stages we face challenges, but at least we do see that in that industry. They, they, they do have a head start because at least they have more of a pool to, to draw from, from to diversify who's inventing and patenting. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so I think that's the last question I see. If anybody has any last ones, feel free to type those out. Um, but Holly, I just wanted to say thank you again so much for your time today and for joining us. Um, we are getting close to the end of our time. so. 
Um, big thanks to you and all the work you're doing and Invent Together um, and everything that's going on there. It's all great and so, so incredibly important. Um, did just want to say, um, just to kind of wrap things up, um, save the date to everyone on here for, for next month. We'll have a great kind of a, a good follow on to this conversation. We'll have um, Dr. Enten Hamdan Livermento joining us from WIPO to kind of talk a little bit about the work that um, she's doing and um, things WIPO in general is doing to inc increase inclusivity and measure engagement in the patenting system. So perfect follow on to today's discussion. Uh, be on the lookout for an invite for that in the next few weeks. Um, and then I, th I think that's all we have for everyone today. I'm not seeing any more questions. A um, couple of thanks from everyone in the chat. Um, it's been a great discussion um, and hope, hope that everyone has a great rest of their Monday and rest of their week. Um, Holly, do you have anything else? Well, just to thank you so much, Caroline, for, for having me and really appreciate it all of the, the questions and the comments in the chat and look forward to, to working with folks. I'm really excited about all the work that you're doing in Kentucky. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us.